Number 5. Megalania. Meet Megalania, proof that Australia's been running on nightmare mode since the Ice Age. Forget crocs, forget snakes. This was a lizard the size of a pickup truck, with venom. Basically, nature said, what if we gave the Komodo dragon an Australian passport and removed the safety features? We're talking about roughly 50,000 years ago, yeah, not millions. That's basically yesterday in Earth time. While mammoths were still roaming Siberia, the first humans were setting foot in Australia and bumping straight into this guy. Picture a Komodo dragon that never stopped growing 15 to 23 feet long, close to 2 tons. It was basically a pickup truck with fangs. Then as usual, scientists started arguing. Some said it weighed 700 pounds, others said 4,000. So science did what it does best, and concluded, it's big, that's the official unit of measurement now, Bigasaurus Rex. But the nightmare wasn't its size, it was chemistry. Yep, it was venomous. And not the mild kind either. This stuff made your blood stop clotting and your body shut down. It didn't need to crush you, it'd just bite once, wander off and let the venom finish the job. You'd go into shock while it calmly followed you like the world's slowest horror movie villain. Evolution's first passive-aggressive predator. Now imagine this. You're a prehistoric hunter stalking a giant wombat the size of a fridge. You've got your spear, your confidence and zero idea that a 20-foot venom lizard is creeping up behind you. Every rustle, every shadow, yeah, that's him. The Outback Dragon. Final boss of the Pleistocene. No respawns, no checkpoints. Just game over, mate. As for how it vanished, no one knows. Maybe climate change, maybe food shortage, or maybe early humans said nope and burned half the continent. Either way, Megalania left behind a solid legacy, a country where everything still tries to kill you. It's like nature looked down and said, yeah, let's keep that vibe. So next time someone brags about wrestling a croc, remind them their ancestors used to play hide and seek with a two-ton venomous lizard. Megalania didn't just rule the outback. It was the outback. And if it ever came back, every kangaroo would file for early retirement. Number 4. Dinosuchus. Think Megalinia was scary. Meet Dinosuchus, its heavier, meaner, beer-bellied cousin. The name literally means terror crocodile. If Sarcosuchus was the classic model, Dinosuchus was the deluxe edition with boss battle mode. We're in North America, about 82 million years ago, when everything was oversized, aggressive, and uninsured. This brute stretched 33 to 35 feet long, basically a living 10-yard submarine with teeth. Its head, the size of a dinner table. This wasn't a narrow fish-snatching snout. This was an industrial-grade bone crusher. It didn't say I eat fish. It said I chew dinosaurs for fun. Now the classic question, did it hunt T-Rex? Good news, no. Bad news, it hunted T-Rex's cousins. And this isn't speculation, scientists have found dinosaur bones with Dinosuchus tooth marks. Science doesn't lie. It just says, yep, this thing bit everything. Picture it, you're an Albertosaurus parched after a long day. You lean down to drink, calm, quiet. Bam, a 30-foot tank of scales launches from the river like a torpedo grabs you and drags you under. On land, you're the king. In the water you're lunch with a side of humiliation. That's what ecologists call niche partitioning. I call it the circle of nope. Danosuchus was Jaws before Spielberg except the theme song was just bubbles and screaming. It didn't chase you, it waited. And anything that touched the shoreline, gone. So no Dinosuchus wasn't just a crocodile, it was the monster under the dinosaur's bed. If T-Rex was king of the land then Dinosuchus was the beast that made the king afraid to take a bath. Halfway through folks, if you've made it this far, smash that like button, and subscribe to feed the YouTube algorithm gods. We're diving into the top 3 next and trust me, it only gets bigger, meaner, and a whole lot weirder. Number 3. Sarcosuchus. Welcome to the giant crocodile department when evolution got carried away. Our first contestant Sarcosuchus, better known by its blockbuster nickname Super Croc. If you think modern crocs are big, this one was the 4K Ultra Edition. We're talking roughly 112 million years ago, back when the Sahara wasn't a desert, it was a swampy super river system. Picture the Mississippi but with dinosaurs doing laps. Sarcosuchus stretched 40 feet long, weighed around 10 tons, in other words, a school bus with scales and bad intentions. It lived alongside dinosaurs, and some scientists think it occasionally snacked on them. Imagine going for a drink at the riverbank. And across the water, a literal bus is deciding whether you're lunch material. Now here's where the drama kicks in. Look at that snout, long sleek, fancy. It's the crocodile equivalent of a sports car. Problem is, that same snout shape matches today's fish-eating gavial. Which led to one brutal discovery in 2014 Sarcosuchus couldn't death roll. Yeah, the most iconic crocodile move, the one that turns prey into confetti, this 10-ton monster couldn't do it. Evolution handed it a tank's power, but forgot to install the steering wheel. So what do you get a prehistoric Dyson vacuum? It didn't hunt, it sucked. Fish swam by, sorry buddy, slurp, gone. A monster the size of a bus, with the diet of a picky toddler. 
But wait, plot twist. As it aged, its skull changed. The snout thickened, the jaw widened. Translation, it graduated from fish only to whatever fits. Fish turtles, small dinosaurs, even co-workers. The retirement menu got real diverse. So yeah, a 40-foot, 10-ton crocodile that couldn't spin but could still ruin your week. Nature basically built a water tank, then handed it a learner's permit. And that, folks, is super croc-proof that even monsters have awkward teenage years. Number 2. Mosasaurus runner-up on our list, the one and only Mosasaurus, the Hollywood celebrity that made the great white shark switch careers. Not a dinosaur, thank you very much, this was a sea lizard, 50 feet long, descended from Komodo dragons with a little bonus snake DNA. And that snake part, that's where nightmares begin. If snakes make you nervous, skip this part. Because Mosasaurus was basically a swimming serpent, with flippers and two jaws. Yeah, two. While snakes unhinged their jaws to swallow big meals, Mosasaurus didn't bother. It had an extra set of teeth in its throat. Scientists call it a pterygoid jaw. I call it the back door to hell. Imagine getting swallowed thinking it's over, then suddenly surprise a second mouth pops out and starts chewing. That's not biology, that's alien with gills. It's diet, simple rule, if it had a heartbeat it was food. Fish, sharks, turtles, seabirds, other marine reptiles, even other mosasaurs. One fossil showed three relatives inside another's stomach. If humans have family dinners, this was dinner of the family. Science calls it cannibalism. I call it a reunion gone wrong. This wasn't your average predator, it was the final boss of the ocean. Sharks were appetizers. Whales were dessert. If you heard a splash, congrats, you were the splash. It moved like a torpedo with an attitude tail, whipping jaws, snapping entire coral reefs, handing in resignation letters. Every time it opened its mouth, the ocean flinched. It's the only creature that could make the sea hang a sign, closed for lunch. Mosasaurus feeding. On land, T-Rex ruled. Underwater Mosasaurus ruled the apocalypse. A 15-meter nightmare with two jaws, a family eating habit and the reason the prehistoric ocean basically shut down for maintenance. Number 1. Perusaurus. And finally the king. Not of dinosaurs. Not of oceans. But of swamps. Meet Perusaurus, or as I like to call him, Caymanzilla. While other crocs bit their way through the food chain, this guy bit through time itself. We're in the Miocene roughly 16 to 5 million years ago, deep in South America. Back then, the Amazon wasn't a paradise. It was a crossfit gym for monsters. Purosaurus stretched over 40 feet, weighed 8.5 tons, and had a skull 5 feet long, roughly the size of your entire body. Stand next to it and congratulations you just became a snack that fits perfectly. Now for the math, the part where physics cries. Bite force 69,000 newtons. That's 7 tons of pressure in a single chomp, twice that of T-Rex. If T-Rex was the bite of the century, Purosaurus was the software update that broke the system. It didn't just bite, it deleted. This wasn't a predator, it was a design flaw in nature's safety plan. And yes, it could do the death roll. Imagine 8 tons of spinning fury turning you into protein paste. Every rotation was basically an extinction event. To keep that engine running, it needed 88 pounds of meat every day. Every single day. No cheat days. It hunted giant ground sloths, capybara-sized cows and anything dumb enough to breathe near the water. If it had a pulse, it had a problem. So why did it vanish? Because it won too hard. Perusaurus was the economic bubble of evolution, massive growth, zero sustainability. When the wetlands dried and prey ran out, the eight-ton meat grinder starved itself to death. Nature probably looked down and said, lesson of the day, don't upgrade your bite harder than your food supply. And just like that, the Swamp King was gone, leaving behind one terrifying legacy. Earth once built a hydraulic press that could swim. And ever since no swamp has dared to bubble again, you've reached the end. Welcome to Beats Lore, where we decode the strangest legends of prehistory. Next episode's your choice. A. The scariest ancient beasts ever found. B. Apex predators that went extinct for being too dumb. Or C. Mythical. Monsters that turned out to be fossil misunderstandings. Drop A, B, or C plus your reason in the comments we'll feature it in the next ranking. Like, subscribe, bell on so you don't miss the next drop where the ice age is never as cold as the stories we tell.